Hi, I'm Jean Fiorini. Thanks for joining the Tarot Tips. Today, as I mentioned in the last Tarot Tip, we're going to talk about the issue of timing. This is a very tricky thing uh, when you're dealing with Tarot for a couple of reasons. Uh, the big reason being that, uh, not to get too philosophical, but there really isn't such a thing as time. So when we're trying to pin down something that sort of has an artificial boundary uh, around it to begin with, uh, we're going to have our challenges. Um, the second issue around matters of timing is this quantum idea of the number of factors and, and the for, and the idea that things are always changing. So um, that notion that uh, the chances of things changing between now and tomorrow are smaller than the chances of things changing between today and next week or next month or next year. So I always have a lot more confidence in things that are fairly close to the current time. I don't like to go too far out into time. It's not really a bad thing. It's just not something that I'm comfortable with because of the notion of the variables. There's so many ways that quantum wave reality of all the ways that things can interact and relate to, to change the course. So I always think of terms and things of uh, percentages and possibilities. Um, having said that, uh, there are lots of traditional ways to look at matters of timing. Some of them have to do with looking at the image on the card and trying to get uh, a visual sense. You know, does that look like winter? Does that look like spring? Kind of using that method. You also, sometimes if you're uh, aware or you have the book learning of the astrological association behind each card, if you know, oh, well, that one's Taurus, so that might be something that happens in May, you can do that. But the method I'm going to show you today kind of goes through the back door with the issue of timing. Um, it's a method that is described in my Spreads and Layouts book. Again, it's one of those very simple methods that you can use as a base and expand and develop, or you can just use it kind of in its simplistic bare bones and probably still get good information there. But the idea is not to ask when, but to give compartments for each time increment and draw cards for the increment and see where you see car cards coming up in that increment that might indicate a guess that's when the issue might occur. So let's go to the tarot table and I'll show you an example how you might want to work with this method. Okay, like I said, the, the um, method here is going to be to decide what increment is most appropriate for your question and then uh, go from there. So if, let's say, your issue is uh, when, if you're, let's say, out of work uh, and you're looking for work, let's say, um, the question might be when, when am I most likely to get a job um, that's going to suit me? And then, so in that case, the increments might be a matter of weeks. So you might say week one, week two, week three, week four. If I have a question like, when will true love come into my life and we will have a long and lasting partnership, I might want to look at that in terms of uh, seasons. Do I see that coming in the spring, in the summer, in the fall, in the winter? So that would be four increments and drawing cards for each one of those. Let's use something that works with the months. Let's say that I am thinking of selling my house and I want to know when my house is most likely to sell. Given the, you know, and this is a real tricky question these days with the market being what it is and finances and the economy being what it is, but let's just use it as our example. Uh, to make the point about this layout. So if the question is when uh, given the current conditions and situations and what I'm doing, when might I see my house selling? And I am going to use months as the increments. Unless you are on the asking this question on the very last day of the month, I wouldn't uh, sell yourself short. I would, even if I'm asking this question on the 25th of the month, I still would include the month that I'm in. So let's, we're going to pull one card for the first month. Again, I like the random draw on this. 
where you can just sort of go in and pull the one. Here's week two, here's month two. We'll pull out four. Here's month three. Here's month four. So this gives us maybe the unfolding pattern. Things as they are, how is it most likely to unfold? So month number one, Ace of Cups. That feels positive to me. That doesn't feel quite like, yes, your house is going to sell. To me, I would look at that card and say, well, there might be some tending of your house, some um, sprucing up that could happen, a little bit of TLC that your house could benefit from in order um, to facilitate a sale. So that's month one. Month two, six of cups, another cup card, very interesting. To me, that looks like, well, there's probably going to be interest. People might be coming. I think people like the house. Still, I'm not sure I feel like, you know, in our made up scenario here that that's about a house sale. Okay, third month, we see Page of Swords. Here we see a new approach. Here we see, well, let's, let's think of this differently. The, the Page of Swords might say, let's, let's get some new ideas on the table. Let's market this a little bit differently. Maybe that's a card of some negotiation going on. It does shift elements out of the cups into the swords and it stirs things up a little bit. Card number four, nine of wands. So in the fourth month still, there's, there isn't a house sale, I wouldn't say. Now this is a totally made up scenario. I personally am not planning to sell my house. So, you know, we're just using this as a way to illustrate how the method would work. Um, and those are random interpretations. You might have looked at that first card and, and said, oh, well, that might be a house sale, but that would be an intuitive call in the moment. Um, that certainly would be a valid point. The purpose here is to show you how the method works. Now, again, I always like a helper card. So if I've got this nine of wands in the fourth month and my house still hasn't sold, I'm going to pull a couple of helpers. Like what could help me get this get this moving and, and so uh, that's a little pun uh, get this process moving and so that we can move up move on in this case I'm just gonna pull two helpers star and four of swords to me that would be I'm gonna move them back into the frame there helper cards star and four of swords that might imply well just sit tight you know try not to worry about it um, something good is coming uh, down the road but you know no sense I have a friend who used to say get no sense getting your knickers in a twist about it so hope that uh, gives you some idea of how that method works it's very effective it's it's to me more effective than approaching the when question directly head-on all right, like all reading methods, that one is a great one to um, either use in its entirety as it is, keeping the increments clear in your own mind and drawing cards for each increment. Um, again, that's another place where you might want to keep all of your cards face down until you've pulled each, each um, increment, just so, again, so you don't get distracted by the information that's there. Um, I also want to, uh, remind you that um, if you haven't already heard I'm going to be hosting my own internet radio show starting July 11th 3 o'clock in the afternoon Eastern Time uh, we're going to be uh, having a tarot call-in show um, I will be reading cards online or on the radio uh, we'll be talking tarot we'll be talking metaphysics uh, it should be a lot of fun, and I hope you tune in. It's uh, Wednesday afternoons, 3 p.m. Eastern Time, uh, on the Women for Women Internet Radio, w4wn.com. So that's very exciting, and I hope you'll tune in occasionally for that. So thanks for joining the Tarot Tips. I hope that uh, tip on timing will give you something to work with, and we'll see you next time.